All right, we are back once again. TNL moved to Thursday nights. Who'd have thunk it? But there's a reason for that. I think Tuesday's just too high traffic. But Tuesday's fine if we're doing launch streams, and often we are. But today we're kicking it, kicking back with another flashback. The At Games ColecoVision flashback. If you watch the show, you know we picked up one of these a while back on our pickup blog. And, you know, now that we have it, it's time to take a look at it. We looked at the Intellivision one, and it was nice. I'm not sure how this is going to find us, though. What's interesting about this, I'm taking a close look at it. It's a brand new unit. It's never been used. I mean, the twist ties are untouched. John Rogers has joined us. Welcome, JR. Always great to see you on an episode of TNL. We got this brand new flashback, and you may be the first to see it in action. It's going to be in action. Can't wait to get it in action. And I don't mean with Alphabet Zoo. Now, there's some good stuff on here. This is not the most accurate controller I've ever seen. Now, to be fair, the ColecoVision controller wasn't anyway. But I grew up playing ColecoVision. My neighbor and best friend had one. And we just lived on that thing. That and the 5200. So... Super Ness is here. Welcome, Super Ness, and welcome, Jeff Bailey, Big JB in the house. We're ready to get started with some big B and J. Bump and jump. We're going to hit that up because you know I love bump and jump. The, Coleco, the ColecoVision version is not something I know about. I've not played this version. I've played a lot of ColecoVision, but this was not one of the games that we played. Looping was one of the, my favorites on the ColecoVision. And that dadgum Smurfs game. Open Every Box has joined us. Welcome, Open Every Box, and welcome, Nightbot. Ye the dadgum Nightbot. All right, so to select the controller, we're going to hit number one. Number one. And we're off to the races. All right. You know what's interesting? I don't think there's any game sound coming out which that would be another instance of the flashback not being compatible with the Elgato. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't hear any game sound. Do you hear any? I don't hear any game sound. I know the sound works on it because I tested the machine earlier today to make sure it would come on. H Harold has joined us, and I just jumped in the water. Welcome, Harold. I have one of these, never played it. Well, whoever had this one never played it. It's a brand new unit. It's strange that we're not getting any sound with this, though. Because it was getting sound on the Elgato, but we get over here to OBS and I've got nothing. Lovely Sweaters has joined us. Boy, that jump is touchy. I mean, you got to mash that button all the way through or he's not jumping. And again, these controllers are untouched. They're practically brand new. Well, I wasn't ready for that. Get ready. cannot believe it doesn't have sound. Woo! That was a jump. And we blew up. I'm not satisfied. Come on, Dad, come it. Well, sound or no sound, we're still going to have a good time with this, but I know the sound works because I tested it this morning. The At Games Flashback 9 and 10 are not compatible with Elgato. It does not get any sound. The Commodore 64 Mini has had problems with it. It's intermittent. The Retron 77 from Hyperkin does not work with Elgato. They just don't. I don't know. What, I mean, you can play the games, but that does not pick up any sound. I have the Avermedia HD, whatever this thing is. Your player two has one. He did a review on it on his channel. It's uh, another capture card, and I don't. You know, I want to get it hooked up and test it out with these and see if it makes any difference. Just for streaming these plug and plays alone. Oh my God, that's rough. All right, well, we finished one round. 
You got 11 cars. That's probably not great. Guys, so glad to have you guys on TNL. So glad to have you joining us this evening. Again, we're going to switch to Thursdays for a while. I just think that schedule-wise, that's going to work out better for me to get into these later in the week. Got a lot of production stuff going on right now. New videos, new content coming out for you to watch. It's going to be a new one tomorrow. Going to be one uh, probably before the weekend is up. So two new videos coming your way on the show. And we're in the water. Yeah, I swear this was getting sound at the menu, though. Because I did a test at the menu, and it was, it was, it was receiving sound. Y'all correct me if I'm crazy, but I'm not hearing any sound. And again, that would be... God, I'm pressing it. He won't jump. It's getting sound at the menu, which it does on the flashback, too. I swear they have the same emulator, the same innards for all these things. And yet you can't run ROMs on, you know, from certain consoles on these things, but they've got one for just about every type of system out there, except for obviously Nintendo stuff. Everything from this era. They have not done a 5200 one, but we have 5200 games on the Atari Flashback Classic software available on leading current gen systems. Best way to get that is for your Nintendo Switch, so it's portable, but not only that, but you get all three volumes in one game. So a lot of value there for your buck. Also, they didn't print a whole lot of the other ones for Xbox and for PS4. But Volume 3 on the PS4 is like a $50 game now. And retail, it was only 20 bucks. So these collectors, man, they're nuts trying to get full sets. Yeah, all you can hear is my voice. Yeah, you can't hear it. Okay, well, that tells us what we need to know. When we get back out to the menu. Let's get out to the menu now. No, it's not registering anything. That is so peculiar. And that's a real shame because there was some really neat sounds on here I wanted to share with you. Well, we're not going to let it get us down. There's plenty of stuff to look at. And what I really wanted to play some of was Gateway to Appshy. Now, if you're not familiar with Appshy, you should be. You should get into it. Now, Dungeon Quest is as old as the hills. I think it originated in 79. Uh, Gateway to Apshai was 83. And the Temple of Apshai Trilogy released in 85, which was my first introduction to Apshai. The lore of Apshai is deep. It's evil. It's wicked. It's just really, really cool. So you start out with stats. And first of all, to have stats in a game this old, I mean, that's heavy duty. Not going to lie. That's heavy duty. Uh, but Temple of Apshai Trilogy was a lot deeper than this. The original Temple of Apshai, you could plug your D&D &D numbers right in, right off the paper and play. So that was a thing. And uh, you would advance. Your stats would go up. You'd find loot, you know. Doing that in the in the early 80s, that was just unheard of. So we're starting out with a dagger and leather armor. Dining room open at five, guys? I hear you, man. I'm ready to get out. I really am. But we haven't left the house since March the 7th. Let's select a dungeon. I think dungeon number one would be just fine. I'm not new to Apshai, but I'm new to this. And when I tested this out earlier and it did work, the first thing I noticed was that the sounds of him walking were the same as the shuffling sounds in Temple of Apshai. So very closely related. Uh, we're going to pick up a short sword. So now we can actually change to the short sword. It won't look any different, but it makes a different sound when you swing. Unfortunately, you're not going to get to hear it. But... Yeah, I mean, this is where it's at. So when the screen flashes green, I'm getting him. When it flashes red, it's getting me. Gorilla Face Gaming is in the house. Welcome, Double G. What's up is we're playing Gateway to Apshai on the ColecoVision flashback. Oh, a cobra. 
or something. A garter snake. It's a garter snake, and he's having to take it on. This is illegal. Return it to the Dollar General immediately. Oh, it's so great, though. God, Appshy was so awesome. In Appshy, you can actually get a cursed sword instead of a magic sword, and it would actually have a negative modifier on it, and you'd be stuck with it until you would buy a replacement sword, which, you know, isn't the magical one you probably gave up to get the cursed one, but the cursed one was always in red writing on the screen, and that always was so cool to me. When I was a little kid, I was like, man, I want the cursed sword, just so, I, just so I'm a different character, you know, I have a cursed weapon. What a neat backstory that is. Like trying to beat Zelda with a wooden sword. Oh, here we got some. We got some loot. A healing salve. Ooh. Ooh, he's getting it rubbed in there. I don't know how to use my healing salve, but I bet I need to. There it is. I think he used it. Alright, so we're we're in good shape. There's like forty thousand rooms in this program. But if you all watch Brian's Man Cave, he's played this recently. It wasn't on this. I think he was emulating it, but uh, he plays a lot of old ColecoVision and Intellivision stuff. And I was like, yeah, man, Appshot, that's, you're talking my language right there. Oh, we got him. A lead copper? Is that what that said? A lead copper? It doesn't make any sense. My, we've come a long way. This thing's wrecking me, dude. Get off of me. I can't get him. I've been slain by a stray cat. Oh, but we can continue. We've still got our short sword. And the monsters didn't respawn. I wonder how many times you can do that. Now, in, uh, in Temple of Abshai, if you die, there are three outcomes. Lowenthal... The wizard can save you, and if he does, he'll take away any magic items you're carrying as payment, but you'll be alive, and that has to be good enough. Keys open the door. Now, if Bendik the monk saves you, that's the best outcome, because he just wants a small donation to the church, and then you're back on your feet. If Olias the, the greedy, hungry dwarf saves you though you're up a creek because he's going to want all your money all your jewels in exchange for your life but you'll be alive the fourth option is that you will have made a warm meal for a monster this thing again I'm gonna, this is like a swamp rat or something oh my god we're getting wrecked I don't know where you see your health. An iron scepter. I think we found three different types of scepters. Atari creep is here. It's a stray cat. It totally is. Had this for the Atari 800. I've got it for the uh, for the 400. And we're going to look at it in a future episode of Vintage Computing. And when we do, we'll compare it side by side with this version and just see who did it better. The question is how I'm going to get the game sound off of this thing with this capture. I've got to get this Aver Media thing hooked up. It's got to be light years better than this Elgato. But, you know, I've been using the Elgato for years, and I kind of just don't want to change up. I'm an old dog, and I don't like new tricks. Oh, here's something another short sword we don't need that now in Temple of Apshai it was just like D&D you could go to a description screen and it would give you a description of the room that you were in and that is you know they would be very descriptive you would read in the book it would tell you about where you were and did I step on a, yeah, a pit trap I died in a pit trap unreal Oh, there's you. Okay, so you have lives. I'm with you. Okay. Well, we're not going to let that stop us. But yeah, you would read these really in-depth descriptions of the room you were in, and the adventure would carry on being powered on the most powerful GPU in the history of gaming. That was a pit trap. The imagination. 
You know, in our D&D &D campaign, I actually made an entire adventure based on one of the levels of the temple. And we played it, and it went really well. And I didn't need that. I mean, I could have made my own dungeon. Wasn't the point. The point was we just role-played through a Temple of Apshai dungeon quest dungeon in 2018 or whenever that was that we did it. And by God, that's pretty awesome. Here's something. A lead scepter. They're really into scepters here. Empty room. We got a door. Boom. Door. In. Another door. In. Oh, God. It's go time. Hit the mat. Hit the mat. A silver chalice. What could we put in that? Some ale, maybe? A golden crown. My dude's coming out of here looking like a straight up peump. Again, for those of you just joining us, we're playing Gateway to Apshai on the ColecoVision flashback from At Games. And again, this is a brand new unit. Now, I didn't know that when I purchased it. I got this for 15 bucks at a Second and Charles secondhand shop in North Carolina. It was such a cool pick because we were there to pay retail. You know, I wasn't yard sailing. We were just visiting family up there. And here I am finding like a $90 freaking console for 15 bucks. And yes, they can go for anywhere from 60 to as much as over $100 on eBay right now. In the condition that this one's in, definitely over 100 for what we've got here. Grumpy Driver is in the house. I never liked these as a kid. I was just drawn to these as a kid. Really all the epics games I was. In fact, I didn't get Rogue because I bought Temple of Apshai. That was a stun spell and a pit trap rolled into one. I bought into that hook, line, and sinker. But I remember sitting at the service merchandise and I had a Temple of Apshai in one hand and Rogue in the other. And I was, eh, I was Peter Griffin at the movie store when it's closing. <laughs> he can't decide if Ernest is going to jail or Ernest doesn't go to jail. But I bought Temple of Apshai Trilogy. It's three games, right? Do the math. That's better than one. And I left Rogue there, and then I always wondered about the Rogue that got away. Now, obviously, we know what Rogue is. We know that it's awesome. But I was never able to get Rogue for the ST. You swamp rat, drop him. Eat the mat. Now, how do we use these arrows? We got, we got a stun spell. Ashcan is in the house. The Portland Bell is in the house. Welcome to the MC Mer Show. We're having a fantastic time here delving the dungeons of Apshai. And I hope that you're going to help us out here and you're going to come do it with us. It was a great find. I got to tell you, they had that and the Intellivision one sitting there boxed and complete. And I was like, done. You know, I didn't even go up to look at the stuff in the case because they're always overpriced GameCube games. They'll have like Resident Evil for like $70. Like, no. But you catch them slipping on the other shelves, you know, but yeah, there they were. And I was like, oh, my we still got lives. But how are we going to find our way all the way back there? We still got lives. We got five arrows. How do we fire them? I think they put us in another dungeon. No, it's still level one. We just didn't go this way. All right. So no, not the suns. Not the, okay. The bow. But how do we use the arrows? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Apparently you can get magic arrows and everything else just like you did in Temple of Apshai. So. Temple of Apshai trilogy included, of course, the Upper Reaches of Apshai and the Curse of Ra which was going into the Pyramid of Ra, and it was its own dungeon, and it was mad spooky. And I don't mean to spend too much time on this game, but it was kind of the reason we... I mean, when I saw this had Gateway, I was like, holy crap. 
I was like, I finally got a way to play Gateway to Appshy. And I'm such an idiot, because, like Jeff Bailey was saying, this was on the Atari 400 and 800 systems, and I've got a complete copy for the 400 sitting over here. What a dork. So what happens when you get a collection as big as this. You forget, and a lot of you have collections this big or bigger. You know what I'm saying. You forget what you freaking have, and it's almost embarrassing. My son is behind me playing uh, Goat Simulator on the Xbox One. Which, strangely enough, is less of a game than this. But, I don't know. The kids play some wacky games nowadays, don't they? They don't know what it was like. They have no clue. The dungeons. The delving. But, yeah, uh... Second and Charles, man, if you can find one of those, I think Books a Million owns them. You will almost always come out of there with something that they slip on because the people pricing the stuff, I don't know what they're doing, but neither do they. <laughs> I went in there one day, they had a Kid Icarus on NES, perfect condition cartridge. And it was like $16. No, right? Too much. And then there was one right next to it, and it was $3.50. Same one. And in just about as good a condition. Oh! Oh! Got him. Not very good, but we got him. So yeah, of course I picked it up for that, and I didn't even need it. I just wasn't going to leave it there. They had Golvelius Valley of Doom complete on the Sega Master System for $10. It's like a $60 game. I have it. I mean, I've had it since it came out. Love that game, but... Not leaving it there. Jake Wheelie's in the house. And yes, we're going back in time. You know that's what we do here. Again, if any of you are wondering where the sound is, the sound works on this machine, but the Elgato capture card is not compatible with some of these earlier at games consoles. And what's strange is it worked with the 7800, you know, the original flashback. It just doesn't work with the late model flashback Ataris, and it didn't work with this tonight. So just weird. I'm assuming you push the keypad to move around. So what we have is we have the stick and the action button attacks and then one changes your inventory around, two changes your item around, not your weapons, but your actual items. Four pulls out the keys to open the door. Hamburg 1975 says, will the new Atari console be released? Honestly, I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know why they would do it because now they're promoting a gambling website and hotels and it's like okay now I really don't know what part of left field you're playing out of but I don't need you for gambling either. I got a guy for that. And I got websites for that. I got Bet DSI. I got like 300 bucks sitting on there from last football season. All my winnings just sitting there because there's no sports being played right now. Hopefully we're going to get a football season this year. But yeah, it's like, what are they even doing? They have no IPs. They have no property. They have nothing. So we're going to see Atari stuff released on the Amico before we'll ever see it released on an Atari console. And I don't say that, you know, snarkily or condescendingly. I honestly hate it. I was excited for an Atari VCS before the whole poop show that was their, you know, their whole PR behind the whole thing and it becoming a crowdfunded Indiegogo thing. I mean, just... I had my finger on the button to pre-order, and I just said, I can't. I can't do that. I, I don't have good luck with uh, Kickstarter stuff. I've been, I know generally it's okay, but I've been burned before. And I just didn't want to do it for that much money. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. So nostalgia has joined us. Point the camera at the TV. It'll be like we're on the couch with you. During doing some mer market research, how did you find this channel? Were you notified if you were already subbed? That's a great question, Captain, because we've had a lot of problems with notifications on multiple platforms here lately, and it really is it's just the death of these channels. People just don't know when what they watch is coming on. So I hope that you got that you guys got notifications, but if you did not, feel free to let me know because yeah, that's uh, that's good to know. That's good intel. So I hit number four to get the keys out, action button, open the door. You got to be quick to get number one hit there so that you've got, oh, a healing salve. You know we got to use that. One, two, three, four. 
Yeah, you can press restart. You totally have that option, son. Here we go. We didn't go in this room. An iron scepter. Now, from what I understood from the instructions, when you run out of time, they just send you to another dungeon. And I don't hate that, but... I'm sure there will be new treasures. And I wonder what we do. Okay, so we've earned a bonus. Better luck, greater strength. So our strength stat just got buffed. Yeah, it was on the YouTube home screen since this morning. You know, I did a community post too, and that that t circles back to Captain's question. How many of you see my community posts? Nobody interacts with those. I'm not crying here. I'm just saying it's strange that no one interacts with them, and it makes me think no one can see them. Because, I mean, surely somebody's going to interact with it, even if they want to give me a thumbs down and tell me to stick my finger up my butt. But not even that. So I start to wonder if anybody can even see it. Billy G says, I logged into YouTube and seen MC's mug telling me he's live. <laughs> and that's quite a mug, I'll tell you. I wouldn't sip coffee out of it, but it's there. So our health has gone up. Our strength has been buffed, and that's what's up. We have a bow, five arrows, short sword, Leather armor. My son has just vacated the room, so we're going to shut the door back. Thank you for coming. He's done with his game of Goat Simulator. Thank God, because I cannot stand hearing that game. And we're going to press a button to go on. Select a dungeon, number two. SNES says he's never seen them. See, and, and I know you watch my stuff constantly, SNES. So if you're not seeing them, then plenty of people aren't seeing them. But, you know, I'm trying to throw as much out there as I can. Not to be a bug in anyone's ear, but just so that people know what's going on. For instance, there was a post letting you know we've switched TNL to Thursdays from Tuesday. Just to try to ease up on some of the traffic. You know, a lot of people are streaming on Tuesdays and, you know... I want to make sure that everybody doesn't have to watch everyone on the same night. So if you watch a lot of different people Tuesday, you can tune in to me later on in the week. Not that we won't still do a Tuesday for a launch stream, because obviously that's a launch day. Sometimes Fridays are launch days with Nintendo products. But, you know, we do those and we do them. They're time sensitive. Stuff like this is evergreen. We can do it anytime and we will do it anytime. I kind of want to go in that door. I got notified, and you saw the Instagram post. Okay, so like I said, we're just putting it everywhere. I'm putting my face on milk cartons over here. Trying to make sure people know what's going down in MC Murtown, as Captain would say it. When you won't know where you gonna go. All right, so this is a dead end. I just hit a pit trap. Not what I want done. We're going to use our healing salve because I have no idea how much that pit trap hurt. And you know, in Temple of Apshai, a pit trap hurts. I mean, it's a lot of times it's insta-death or it's a 90% freaking... Your, your theme song is catchy. I still need to do one for yours like I did for CM Retro where I do the soul R&B version of your YouTube song. <laughs> All right, we've uh, we've gone as far as we can go in that direction. It's where you want to go, when you want to know, what's going on or what's going down, YouTube Town. All right, now I'm wondering if we're stuck here. What in the world? Yeah, I'm telling you, th that night in the studio was just incredible. And y'all awakened a beast in me that has been long dormant. MC Murr hadn't been on the mic in a hot, fat minute. But I walked up in the studio with Captain Retro and his buddy. And some stuff started going down. What plug and play is that this is the ColecoVision flashback. 
and hold the box up here. Oh, and this is the Dollar General exclusive with the extra built-in game. It's probably not even a real game. Antarctic Adventure. Yeah, that sounds authentic. But, yeah. Um, it's not a new one. I mean, these have been out for quite some time, but they're kind of rare now. I think we've seen enough of this game. Let's move on to another one on the list. I've heard so many great things about Jumpman Jr., and we will take a look at that, but this Mecha 8 has really got my attention. That's so annoying that you have to go down the whole thing, but right or left takes you off the page. But yeah, in this condition, this console will probably be about $100 on eBay. Now, if you find one without the box and all the crap, you can probably be in it about $30, $40. Bucks. Yeet the Dollar General. No joke. God, I hate Dollar General. Where we lived before, we were really in more of a rural area, and that was like the only store in our town. So, yeah, I wouldn't grocery shop there, but if you needed milk or something, you would just run up to Dollar General, but it was so awful. This looks nasty. This can't be real. This this must have been put on here. This isn't real. This wasn't on ColecoVision. I don't believe this. Oh, Jeff, I'll get that to you, sir. I will get that to you. I don't know if you're on Twitter, but even if you're not, I can hit you up on Insta. I think we're not a destroyer yet. We'll start off at normal. Look at this. There's no way this was on ColecoVision. This looks great. But yeah, as a fellow musician, JB, I'd like to get your take on it because we are doing kind of a, a focus group on which version of the song people like best. Uh, there was a remix done shortly after the initial recording. So look at this. It's a shmup. It's a shmup and he won't shoot. <laughs> you shoot. Dad gum boy. Okay, let's don't panic because we have the official instruction manual. So... We're going to die here. That's a given. This is also a given. <laughs> but let's see what we got here. It's not listed. It goes straight from Jungle Hunt to Minor 2049er. Is it in this one? Because they included two manuals. One is for the special... 61 game version, but this wasn't the 61st game. There's no instructions. How in the world are you supposed to play this? I mean, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the keypad wouldn't shoot. This looks great. Do you press the thumbstick? No, you don't. I mean, we can just go headlong into everything, I guess. But that's we're not going to last very long doing that. Okay, 7 pauses it. I mean, the action button has to shoot, right? Are we really just flying into these things? Because, I mean... Okay, now that we shoot, do we get a gun? Do we get a gun? No, we didn't. No. It says 2013. That sounds about right. Yeah. It's not ancient, but it's not new. No, star is to pause it. I give up. Cool looking game, but I don't know what to do. I have to do some research on that. So, Jumpman Jr., let's check that out. That came highly recommended. Again, I played a lot of Coleco back in the day, but it was Smurfs. Uh, Escape to Gargamel's Castle or whatever it was. We used to get ripped and play that one. Looping we played a lot of. Mr. Do. Nothing to it, it says. Well, I'll be the judge of that. Ooh, ooh. Something tells me I was not supposed to do that. JR says, I love the Jumpman games. Well, he didn't jump for me. Use the joystick to move your Jumpman. Use the left side button in combination with up, left, or right to jump. Well, that's what I did. I gotta say, the stick on this thing is junk. 
and it's a brand new unit, so that doesn't say much. But as far as we know, the Coleco ROMs do not run on the At Games Legends flashback, despite them having Coleco Vision games on it. When your Jumpman touches a bomb, it's automatically diffused, and you score 100 points. Okay, I'm in. Oh, I'm not entering a high score. Get real. We sucked. Okay, really? Just play the game. Used to play them on C64. Boy, I tell you, we had a lot of games on Commodore 64. One that I would love to play again was California Raisins. So hard a cat can't scratch it. And I gotta do some research as to why uh, he didn't jump that time. Let's try to jump in place. Why this thing doesn't... I mean, I have to imagine it's just like the Flashback 9. Why it doesn't get any sound. But Now, see, see, that left action button didn't do anything. The right one made him jump. Mosh the keypad is right. Alright, so he got that. He got that. Now, why did he die there? I'm confused. And boy, that's a drawn-out death. That's like he jumped off the dadgum Grand Canyon. Brandon Freezing Factor is here. If anybody didn't already notice that it got 10 degrees colder in the room, the Freezing Factor is amongst us, ladies and gentlemen. BFF, welcome to TNL. Great to have you on the stream. Okay, so this isn't bad. You vaguely remember the California Raisins game. You were like in the Raisins factory or something, and it was so bad. And if anything touched this raisin, it was dead. It was the most fragile raisin. It's a raisin, you know, it kind of stands to reason. But the game, I mean, you think you've raged at something like Dark Souls or Bloodborne. You ain't never raged nothing until you play California Raisins on Commodore. <laughs> You'll be raging first because that's the game that you bought. Second of all, you'll be raging because you're playing a game about raisins. You're raging raisins. Alright, so he's got to jump. This is like Donkey Kong. If you step off, you're dead. A frigid wind follows me everywhere I go. It does. It gets 10 degrees colder when the freezing factor is in effect. You go on the weather channel and check it out. It'll let you know that we're, we're under a freezing factor warning. What else do we have here? Ooh, Sir Lancelot. That sounds cool. It probably isn't. But let's check him out. Sir Lancelot is a big sweaty man. He's the biggest sweatiest man in the land. <laughs> okay, it's a Zonox game. That's interesting. They made those double-ended uh, cartridges. All right, he's so sweaty. Let's get it. Oh, okay. Woo. <laughs> Look at him go. Woo. <laughs> what am I doing? Sir Lancelot is having what he wants to. Having what he wants to. Having what he wants to. I went to the right and came out the other side. Oh, I'm supposed to fly. This is a joust ripoff or balloon fight or something. Sir Lancelot would not be doing this. This is the this horse has the strongest legs in all of Camelot. Whoa! I swear to God, this is like a, this is like a balloon fight ripoff, is it not? That's what it feels like. Oh, I lost a Lancelot, Dad Gummit. Pick a higher number for your speed in Jumpman, says Lizzie Davis. Well, I mean, we could do that. I don't know if I would survive, but if that's a formal request, we'll certainly try it. I wasn't doing very well at the speed I was doing. Oh, we sent that one packing. Space Fury is very unique. Never seen or heard of it anywhere else. All right, well, we'll put that on the list, too. Oh, look at, look at Lancelot coming in hot. I don't think this game is historically accurate. No, there's a few little idiosyncrasies here and there. Maybe those are, I guess those are supposed to be dragons, but and I think I just figured out that that's what they were, but I thought they were ducks. Oh, 
hell, look at this. Now, is that a princess we're supposed to save, or is that a hideous Gorgon wanting to finish us off? This is like the boss fight right here. We gotta finish this thing off is what we gotta do. Whoa! <laughs> get a lid on it, dadgummit. Murr, you get a chance to... Very faithful to the original series. You know, I had my concerns about Streets of Rage 4 because that fire coming out of the dude's hand, I was like, Ugh. I don't know. But maybe I shouldn't be judgmental. I want to play it. G-Lock is going to drop too on the eShop, and I definitely want to play that again. So you said... Yes, yeah, it was definitely joustish. You said a higher number will slow you down in Jumpman. Well, who would have thought that? We're going to take your advice here, Lizzie, and we're going to see if there really is nothing to it. Look how slow he's going. Oh, my God. Do, 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 do. Whoa! <laughs> well, that's manageable. That's probably too slow. So level 8 is like ridiculously easy mode. Whoa! Get that. Defuse the bomb. I really wish we had shot for somewhere around maybe 5. So has he got a limit he can jump, I guess, as far as how far he can go? Well, if he does, we're about to test that out. Oh, no, he, all right, he cleared that. Get to the vine. Oh, he's not going down the vine. Whoa! Yeah, if there was a max distance, we just, uh, we just ran that through the ringer. Let's go this way. Oh, he can't even step off of that. So it has to be a jump. Vines only go up. See, this would have been helpful stuff for them to put in the manual. See, yeah, he's automatically going up as soon as I touch the vine. And purple vines only go down. Well, that's an interesting construct from a puzzle standpoint. It kind of makes you strategize where you're going. Whoa! All right, so we're learning jump, man. Moving right along. I know more about it now than I did five minutes ago. I'm telling you, that's why we do this. It's networking. It's a beautiful thing. We'll check out Space Fury at the request of JB. This doesn't look bad. Not a bad uh, title screen. John Phillips says, good to see something other than the Streets of Rage 4 video tonight. I bet there's plenty of them going down. I bet there is. I mean, I want to look at it, but I'm going to tell you, as a Streets of Rage fan, I liked the first one. I didn't hate second or third, but to me, they just weren't as good. They kind of sidestepped the physics of the first one with some of those weird other characters. I don't know. They just, the first one always was the best to me. The soundtrack on the first one was amazing. Our band actually did a cover of one of the background musics on the first Streets of Rage because it was just so jazzy. And I got the guitar going one night. You know, we were a little blitzed. And I was like, I said, oh my God, I'm playing something from Streets of Rage right now, but we're just going to see what happens. And my man on the drums, man, he just starts, he starts in. I was like, oh, and they, like, they don't know they're playing Streets of Rage, but screw it we're doing it so by the time we were done we'd played it now i know i have a cassette tape recording of that somewhere in the house when i find that that's going to be a video opportunity linda the gamer girl is here she's playing games hit set reminder and linda was in here early she beat everybody here she was in here like noon <laughs> today <laughs> chatting them up so at a girl linda coming through top spot 123 is in in the house I've been having to miss you on Twitch. I'm at work in the mornings. Now, I will be doing evening streams on there too sometimes, but the mornings have been working out really good for me because mornings are really my own, and uh, there seems to be this audience for Destiny on there. So, But there will be more evening stuff too, so 
do not despair. We're just kind of trying stuff. Just like a blind man in an orgy, I'm having to feel things out. And I feel like this guy's going to jump down this hole any second. I don't know how to make him jump. All right, well, he's going to fall. Uh, he won't go down the hole. Guide either the male or female alien. Didn't know we got a choice. Commander from the space for either 25 forming levels. Use the day to to run into the platform of the boarding enemies in order to grab all the coins in the time limit. Two simultaneous pose of objects to collect more coins to the other player. Bonus icons provide temporary and the boards to the screen. Okay. But if he's just going to go back between those two, then what? The side buttons are supposed to jump. And they're not jumping. Oh, I'm not that guy. I'm the alien. Oh, okay. That makes a lot more. I thought I was the little dude. <laughs> well, you're not usually the alien, right? You're the dude. Where did I go? Man, she don't jump very high. Can she beam up? Yes, she can. Well, this is uncharted territory at best. I don't think anybody did, and if they did crack this open to mod it, I think they'd be very disappointed because, I mean, we're not getting sound tonight because it's not compatible with the Elgato. It's not putting out sound, and it and it has sound. And we had that same problem with the Flashback Nine. They're just not great in that sense or the Elgato the old the Elgato period isn't great it's not the best thing out there as far as capture cards go but that is a shortcoming of it I feel like we're supposed to get that okay Woo. but yeah I don't know what you could do with the, I mean this thing as far as an emulator goes is probably very limited that was a game over I don't feel like we really gave this a good shake because I didn't know I was the dadgum alien. Somebody put a Raspberry Pi on a flashback Coleco vision. I suppose at that point you've taken the brains over though, you know, as far as just hacking this and putting stuff on it, I don't know how far you would get with that. But it would be cool if you did because there's a lot of great stuff for, see, the problem is also the licensing. There's a lot of great stuff you could have played on ColecoVision that's not on here because of licensing. That's a problem on all uh, at games products. You know, they don't, like the Atari stuff doesn't have any Pac-Man. You know, this is an example. There's just things that they can't do for licensing reasons, and they won't do. I don't know what this little dude's supposed to do. It's probably not good if we hit him, though. Or maybe it is. I don't know. You know, one game that I was really impressed with from back in the day that was one that I had never played before was Major Havoc. And that's on that uh, at, that's on the Arcade 1-Up Asteroids machine. was really impressed with that. I just never played it before. I've seen pictures of the original cabinet now. Never been at an arcade that had one. It's really great. Yeah, you can get the ROMs. The problem is how you do the controls. I mean, you'd have to have a keyboard plugged into your RetroPie so that you could do the numbers. And, I mean, you could get set up for that. I'm just not right now, but... Eventually, I need to, you know, to emulate certain Commodore 64 stuff... Because I got to tell you, it's becoming less and less likely that I'm going to have a working Commodore 64 setup. They're just so old at this point. Anything you buy, you're going to get hosed. If it works the day you get it, it may not work the next day. It's just, it's a commodity at this point. God, her jump is just gaboofed. All right, let's see what else we got. Any interest in the At Games Legend Arcade? Not really. Not really. There was too many issues early on with the, uh, let's check out the version of Omega Race. There's too many issues early on with the uh, firmware taking a dump. And honestly, there's firmware issues with all the consoles, you know, and th there's updates you need. To, it, just, I don't know, it, just, it was too expensive. 
to even think you know of giving that a shot i mean my wife actually wanted to get one in light of all the arcade one-ups that we got but i was like god i'd already seen horror stories videos of people with their firmware taking an absolute dump and i was like man that'd be me it would definitely happen to me lizzie davis says and television lives for the nintendo ds did it right I had that on the PS2. I don't have it on DS. I didn't even know they put it on DS. And now that you've told me it's on DS, I would I must have it. Ashcan says, you have the C64 Mini. I do. And it would be great if I streamed it. There were some past streams of that on the channel. You can look up. I'm not saying we won't stream it again, because if that's a formal request, if you're putting in a tier one request, we'll stream it. I don't mind doing it again. We almost have to do it again because that Aver Media box, if it's compatible with all these bogus minis and gets the sound off of them in the way that the Elgato does not, we got to go back through and do them all again with sound, right? That's only right. All right, so one is a fast bounce, two is a tunnel, three is an Astro Gates. Press zero for a standard game. That sounds like us. All right. Um, I just hit something. I think I paused it. <laughs> Not sure what the controls are on that. All right. Princess Quest has got to be good, right? You have a quest. You have a princess. You really can't lose there. Omega Race was the first game I owned on my VIC-20. I've got, I've got it on the VIC-20. My VIC-20, though, is giving us trouble. The joysticks aren't working. I guess the port's bad. Captain and I looked at those uh, in a past video on his channel, as a matter of fact. And this doesn't look half bad. An evil king. He looks evil with magical powers and a horrible sunburn. Kidnapped the princess, taking her to a faraway demonic kingdom. Well, I mean, this, this, is, uh, this is accelerating quickly. If the controls work, we got a game. She was made prisoner in a castle. To reach it, a knight must travel without fear. Through the darkness. Well, we've seen this story before and we know how it ends. Yeah, it's a crapshoot. Is it a pretty princess? I don't know. With these graphics, she may not be the comely lass you're hoping for. Never know if you will have a working system when you when you get it to you. Yeah, I need what I need for my Commodore is a new disk drive. I've got a working system, but God, the disk drives. And they're more expensive than the dadgum computer itself. Probably because getting them working is, you know, getting a working one is just that difficult. This is 2012. So somebody's made, this is where these things got corn cobular. Because people were making brews for these plug and plays and putting them on here as filler. Now, if you watch the show, you know that I like brews. But when they're being insisted upon as filler, well, that's kind of lame. Because then we're not getting to see, you know, other ColecoVision games that we wanted to see. He can't jump over the enemy. Okay, so here we go. We're going straight up ghosts and goblins on it now. Give me that heart. Okay, we got a game. We got a game. Is just sadly, if they made this in 2012, this was made to go on this as filler. Doesn't mean it's bad, though. I don't want to sit there and just shun it, but this isn't hitting anybody in the feels. Nobody's nostalgic for this. It's not bad, though. And it makes you wonder. I mean, obviously, they probably have more at their disposal today. But it's like some of the unplayable games of back then. It's like, why couldn't they make something this good then? What did the developers have today to work with that allowed them to make, you know, push this hardware to its limit? What did they have that the uh, designers of yesteryear did not? I'm in a hole. I'm dead. Do you have the at games in television? Yes, Harold, we do. And we streamed that not too long ago as one of the last couple streams on the channel. If you scroll back in the history on my video list on the channel, you will find it. Or just go to the live streams with MC Murder playlist and it'll be one of the most recent ones on that. God, it's so weird pinching this thing like this. Here's a spider and an ice cube. You know, that's good. It's a chest. He won't get it. He won't get the chest. 
You can use paddle controllers for the VIC-20. That's probably what my problem was with the controls on this. I didn't know how you would use them for this because I can barely go left to right with this, let alone get a paddle thing going on. But yeah, I thought you could use Atari joysticks with the uh, Commodores and the ones we were using. I mean, I've got a plethora of joysticks with that kind of plug-in. Some actual Commodore ones. And we couldn't get any of them to work in the Big 20 when me and Captain were over here testing it. So, Port's probably bad and Captain's the guy with the soldering ability. So I'm going to have to turn him loose on it. And I'm up here getting wrecked. Let's see what else we got. Still got a little time left, so I want to see what else we got. You got to get your fishing done in Animal Crossing, no doubt. I got a home loan I got to pay off tonight on there. Well, you know we're playing Toe Mark the Barbarian, right? I mean, that's happening. Toe Mark the Barbarian. Has a really long scrotum. <laughs> Look at Tomark. Oh, where did Tomark just go? What is Tomark doing right now? Linda says, I like the story so far. Except that I'm not controlling him. What, what, in, the, what in the furthest reaches of the nine hells is Tomark doing right now? Okay, we're back in this room. This is like E.T. I fall into a hole and nothing happens. I can't go into that thing. Ooh, I, I can land on this. What is this? Oh, I saw a ball come out. Are we playing like Breakout? Yeah, we are. This is ridiculous. I had high hopes for Toe Mark. Right now, my hopes are right around here. Toe Mark can jump real high, but he can't touch the sky because there's a mouse chasing him. And when he touches it, he goes to hell and becomes a woman in a cage throwing balls at an ogre in the sky. What a really dumb game. <laughs> well, you know, Venture can't be bad. Let's see. I think we played Venture, though. Yeah, we did. We played Venture on the, on the newest Arcade Legends thing. So we've seen their version of that. And Zaxxon, too. And nothing wrong with them. Let's check out Super Cross Force. 1983. I am not familiar with this game. We're about to be. Parallel or diagonal? Well, I'm going to go parallel. Is this another paddle game? That's what this looks like. Yep. No, it's just left to right, but... You know, these games are cool, though, stuff like this. Because, you know, I come from a time where you did have a giant wood grain zenith in the living room that everybody crowded around to watch the worst sitcoms ever, but still they somehow ended up being the best. And, y yeah, the grunting and <clears throat> of old computers trying to launch these kind of games and the fact that you could go out to eat and come back and they still weren't loaded yet. That was just a great time. Poop on an ever-living bun. sound the five and a quarter drives made when encountering a read error or you know what's what's really frightful is the sound that the uh atari st would make it would just start grunting and grinding in fact when i turned it on for anybody here they're like oh my god is it gonna explode it's like no it's supposed to sound like that 
and then a bar of time bombs like bombs would appear on the screen and it would let you know that it fried itself and it was like oh if you saw the bombs it was so frightening I still have nightmares about that till this day what a great computer if Tally the Turtle is better than Tomark the Barbarian, I will seriously have lost a bet with myself. By Carousel Software, he's Tally the Turtle. <laughs> Tally the Turtle. <laughs> Tally the Turtle. Oh my god, this looks so bad. What is... Th no. <laughs> Tomark wins. The heist. That might be cool. It probably isn't, but let's try it. God, I hate that looping's not on here. I'd give anything to play looping. And you know, there was a looping machine at SFGE last year, and it was broken by the time I got to go play it. People and their meat hooks get into these games, and they don't treat them with respect. God, my hand. Good lord. It's like you beat off an elephant. This is not, I mean, what were they thinking in terms of ergonomics? So we're this bandit, right? And we're on a time limit and we're trying to steal paintings, it looks like. Okay. Okay, I'm with you. Here's another very nice portrait over here. Maybe a Sprite advertisement. It's green and yellow. Christopher McDuff and stuff was all over it. You know he was. All right, so you can get on the elevator, or I bet you can come over here with a key and unlock a door. See, look at that. This is playable. I know what I hate, and I don't hate this. This is okay. Whoa! You know, that'll burn his willy off. Oh, it did. I thought I was going to get... Okay, now I know how far it opens, but... All right, no, it's, we're good. We're good. We good. I think. Oh, I bet he's dead. No, he's not. So I guess you have to, is this kind of like a Castlevania thing? Like you can pass through it or you can land on it? Oh, that's a down escalator. So I guess they just won't let you get on it at all. I would like to jump up it though. I mean, come on, who among us hasn't gone up a down escalator at least once in your life? If you haven't, you haven't lived. Yeah, I had a feeling that was bad news. What is that? Whatever it is, he doesn't like it. Oh, ooh. That wasn't quite what I wanted done. Look, a Roomba. Terry Telly the Turtle. That was the worst thing I've ever seen. You just knew that was bad. About as bad as the jumping in this. You'd get the hang of it, though, wouldn't you? You'd measure where you were supposed to be. All right. Well, we still have time. Let's see what else we got. Threshold. I don't know, maybe. Schlong. Let's play Schlong. <laughs> Press right fire for info. Oh, I don't want any info. Oh, this is new. All right. What? What? is this we're playing schlong on the Coleco vision so yeah snake that was the first thing i thought of too on the old nokia phone <laughs> nibbler <laughs> although i don't seem to be dying or making any headway of any kind Yeah, I'm not into schlong. 
search for jewels. Well, they're just going to come right out and tell you, aren't they? They want you to search for jewels. Let's play an easy game, assuming that we don't know how to play. And this is obviously not real either, because it said 2006. I don't want to see that. How much freaking shovel dung did they have to put on this? Well, so far, I mean, Gateway to Apshai is the uh, the bell of the ball, and I think we knew that it would be. Evolution? Oh, that's 1983. Oh, Lord! Those are luck dragons. Well, they very well might have been. What in the furthest gateway of the nine are we doing? So are we, we're an amoeba and we're collecting DNA samples? Is that what we're doing? Because, I mean, I can do that. These seem to be disappearing when we touch them. God, this morning we were murking people on Destiny, grinding for legendary loot in the Crucible. And today, in this very evening, we're an amoeba picking up DNA Ah, he got us. That's not very exciting. Wait a minute. There's a frog. This has absolutely nothing to do with what we were just doing. Oh, okay, so he wants to fly. I get it. And we can't get eaten by the red fish, probably. And we got eaten by the redfish. Lizzie Davis says dragon fire is fun. So we've got a call for pepper two and dragon fire. Well, we're just gonna have to check them out. We went from an amiibo to a frog. This is about as exciting as watching grass grow. So let's uh, go in order here. We heard Pepper 2. Let's check it out. <laughs> the poor frog is not going to make it. He's not. He lacks the physics and the ability. He doesn't have the heart. The heart of the fighter. Pepper 2. There was a Pepper 1. Oh, okay. So we have some multicolored honey pots with faces. Oh. Okay. Um. Uh, mm, okay. You, you, you're Timmy. Okay. So there are butt cheeks going around. And. I don't, I think we're trying to, are we trying to draw a path and maybe section something off here? So that was the game that inspired Evo, the search for Eden. I don't know, man. You got me. You couldn't fill a thimble with what I know about it. Okay, look, so he's, it's like it's a zipper and you're trying to zip it up. Yeah, that's what it is. But if you go back across it, you undo what you did. I'm with you. So you got to keep doing that, dodging the butts. Oh my. Well, at least we know somewhat what we're doing here. It's more than I can say for Toe Mark the Barbarian. Toe Mark definitely does not win awards for Toughest Barbarian. Ugh. Getting sticky. Boop, boop. Oh, 
Oh my god, you're supposed to get those? Well, why did I get that? I got a hundred on that one. Did I have some kind of a power up? I don't know. Not the worst thing I've ever seen. But we're running low on time, so we've got to make sure that we look at all the requests. Dragonfire. I don't have a lot of experience with, but let's take a look. I knew it was an iMagic game, and I know I've probably got it over there on other systems physically, but not something I spent a lot of time on. Really, none of the iMagic games. Oh, look how good this looks. That looks real. I mean, to, to have that, to have it look like that back in the day, that's what's up. Whoa! Okay. Well, there's my guy. Whoa! Okay. So if he jumps, he just falls. Why? Why does he fall? I don't understand why he falls. Thou art finished. No, I haven't even started. Quite the contrary. Come on. Maybe I'm jumping and... No, you jump and he just falls. Or I mean, either that or he's touching them still. Oh my god. Thou art finished. Any tips, Lizzie? I don't see what we're doing here. I mean, I see what we're doing. It's just not working. Yes, we'll play that. No. It's like he can't jump to the left. You can hide in the door. But you have to jump at some point, and the jump inevitably is going to make you fall. Oh, I almost made it. We're escalating. I guess in the red, you just fall through that part, right? Oh, we're in. Oh, dear God. Give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, it looked like you dug and then jumped, but I would do it and he'd just fall off the thing. He was touching part of it. And still falling. People wondered why kids played outside more back in the day. It's because you would get a game like this and you would sit there for three hours and try to do what I just did. And when you finally did and got into this room, you're like, okay, I can go out and play now. <laughs> I don't want any more. This is pretty cool, though, by the age of it, you know, by those standards. Gotta get all the stuff in the room real quick. Look how fast I'm running. Oh, God, not this again. Whoa! So it's castle to castle. That's kind of cool. The red is a drawbridge. Okay, I'm learning. Well, I gotta tell you. That's, I mean, I, you could get hooked on this. I could see it. no, 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 Whoa! Okay, so he didn't have it. He didn't have the high pro glow. So you gotta be on it. I mean, that's gotta be quick. God, it got me. You did well for your first time. Well, that's good to know. I'll sleep better at night knowing that. He's not jumping. Oh, come on. He wouldn't even go forward then. I'm telling you, this stick is not where it's at. If we had an original ColecoVision controller, which probably wouldn't work on this anyway, we might fare a little bit better. The ColecoVision controller was not great anyway. But, you know, it's funny. Back then, you just never really noticed. Even though by then, you know, we were starting to... You, might, you had much better joysticks on computers... Not long after all that, you know, the first NESs started showing up at people's houses. So, 
they forgot to put guardrails on the bridge. But I got to tell you, we're about out of time for tonight. But I got to tell you, this was a fantastic look at this thing. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us tonight. And uh, I want to see who we can raid. Let's see who's still currently streaming. But man, we really got a good luck. We got a good look at this thing. Looks like T-Belly's live. I think we could raid TB. He'd probably like that. He'd get a kick out of that because he would tell each and every one of you that you were in the building. That's my favorite part, the in the building part. So I, I, I show up just for that. I'm copying the link and I'm going to put it in our current live stream here. And we're going to check that out. But yeah, I mean, this was a great comeback for TNL. And I want to start trying to do these on Thursdays. You know, we were doing it Tuesdays. And we'll still have some on some Tuesdays. But uh, I think Thursday is a, is a better night for our general streams. You know, when it's not a launch day or a specific, you know, event that's happening. Thursday's a little bit more carefree. And I think we saw more traffic tonight. I saw a lot of new faces tonight. Saw a lot of you in here that something maybe couldn't make it in on Tuesdays. If Thursday's a better night, I, I, I love it. But we'll do more of it. And you can always hit me up in the, on Twitter, on the community tabs on here. Let me know what you think. I'm going to post the link in here to TB's stream. But let's raid TB and let him know that Murr sent you. Let him know this is a Murr raid. Get over there and let him know what's going on. And again, thank you all so much for hanging out with me tonight. There's going to be so much more coming soon. If you are watching this, if you're watching the recap, make sure that you drop a like on this video. I'm going to need you to drop a like on this video. I hope that you did like this video. Most importantly, if you have not already done so, I'm going to need you to subscribe to the MC Mer Show. Be a part of Mer Nation. We're rising up all the fantastic things we do right here on the show. You need to be a part of Make sure that you smack that notification bell so you're always the first to know when you have those live because you know that I love making it for you. Everything going on right here. So much more coming your way. I can't even tell you the whole of it. A lot of it's still in production. So much fantastic stuff coming your way is going to make my head explode. Just to try to tell you what I got coming your way. There's going to be fantastic so much more coming your way this 2020 is just ugh, teeming with content you just wait and see mc mer signing off for this fantastic stream and i will see each and every one of you again next time good night mer nation